this will be recorded, I believe. So um, yeah, I can see the red light. So that's awesome. We'll be recording this. Um, I will be sharing my slides afterwards as well. So if there's anything that you need clarity on, you will get that by email afterwards to Wes. That feels good. Um, I have a presentation, so I'll, I'll get going. I'll share my screen. Is this any question? Feel free to pop it in the chat. Um, we'll have time for Q&A at the end. Of course, of course. There we go. Um, so our webinar today is the three key mistakes to avoid when looking for a remote job. And of course, of course, I want to tell you what to do instead. So for starters, my name is Rodolphe. Um, I have a little bit of an accent. I'm a Frenchman. I live in Paris, France. Um, I've been a digital nomad and a remote worker since 2013. So I've been doing this for about five years and I couldn't be more excited to share with you all what it is I've been learning so far uh, in terms of landing jobs, in terms of community and traveling as well. And I really want to extend a warm welcome to everyone joining today because um, <laughs> I took this screenshot on Remote Year's website. You don't have to choose between work and travel. I really believe in that. And I've been personally so lucky to get to travel through Asia, through South America, through Africa, through North America, through uh, Europe uh, for the past five years. And I want to share that with you all. And specifically, I want to share some tips on uh, how to apply to remote jobs. So. Why am I here talking to you all today? I'm here because I created a website called Remotive. The URL is remotive.io. And we are a website, a job board, and a community gathering over 25,000 remote workers. Um, we've been lucky to be voted number one on Product Hunt. We've done a bunch of press. And uh, we're gathering subscribers from over 185 countries. So we are global. Um, over half of our readership is in North America. And uh, we are very excited to help people landing remote jobs, especially in startups. So I know that you're dining from every single place around the world. You're dining in from everywhere. So I want to be respectful of your time today. So you are in the right place, my friends, if you want to work remotely at a startup and if you are committed to finding a remote job. As you know from previous experiences yourselves, Finding a job is a job in itself. So it takes work. I'm happy to give direction. I'm happy to give you tips. But of course, you'll have to work together with me on this one as well. And you are also in the right place if, if you have a relevant identified skill or expertise. What do I mean by that? I need you to have a relevant skill, meaning that maybe you are an engineer. Maybe you work in sales or customer support or design or data or product management, anything that needs to be relevant in a startup. This is not about skill building. This is about finding you a remote job. And finally, you are in the right place, whether you've already applied to a remote job or whether it's for your first time. So that's not a criteria. In either case, you are where you need to be. And what you'll learn today is um, three key mistakes to avoid when looking for a remote job and of course what to do instead um, i've structured this so that i'll be sharing my slides afterwards as you can probably tell by now i tend to get excited so i tend to talk a little fast um, if you're missing anything you'll have my slides afterwards um, i also will be having a q a session at the end of this and i'll also introduce my bootcamp program which is a special program geared towards landing a remote job so pop in question anytime in the chat. I'll make sure to come back at the end of this, okay? So why am I telling you about remote jobs in the first place? Because I'm very, very passionate about this. The picture you are looking at right now is a picture of Sergey Brin and Larry Page, the so two co-founders from Google. I took this picture myself in Google offices back in 2011. I was working for Google and uh, visiting San Francisco in order to go on Google's campus, I had to take the shuttle in the morning. And Google shuttle took an hour and a half to two hours each way to go from downtown San Francisco uh, to the Mountain View office. And I started to question the way people were working and question the way that we were spending our time as ambitious professionals willing to explore the world together with having a fulfilling career. So I started to ask myself a series of questions, such as 
why do we work this way? Is there any other way to work? And considering that you all are enrolling in remote here, I feel like you may be asking yourself similar questions, such as, do we really need to commute every day to go to the office? Do we always need to work in offices? What about coffee shops? What about working from a mountain or from a co-working space or anywhere else? And also, why working nine to five? Some of us work better in the morning, other works better at night. Respecting our energy, respecting our rhythm can mean that we may want to be on different schedule. Finally, could we live and work differently? If you're dialing in today, I feel like you may be wondering the same things. Back in 2013, I resigned for Google, from Google to try and crack the code of remote work. And I found this gentleman here on the screen that said the following thing. He said, the best people to hire are not in San Francisco, they're all over the world. Of course, you've got very talented individual in San Francisco, but not only in that one city. And that person runs a remote team named Basecamp uh, that is an entirely remote team with over 50 employees. And much like you are today, I was looking for a remote position myself at the end of 2013, beginning of 2014. And I really thought that remote work would be an awesome option for me because I wouldn't have to commute, so I could have flexible, flexible hours to do a variety of things, such as exploring and traveling at the same time. Number two, I could be living from the place that makes me the happiest. Exactly a year ago, I went to Asia for a month, and for a month, I could um, work from Bangkok and also carve out some time to go and discover Myanmar, and I went there backpacking together with my, my dad for 10 days. That was very, very special in terms of exploration, family time, and bonding as well. So it leads me to spending more time with the people I love, which is a very big reason for me to do that, and uh, working my own way by making the rules on, on how I organize myself. And back when I was looking for a remote job, I had no idea where to start. I messed up many, many times. What you're looking at right now is a screenshot of my then website. I was writing about anything and everything. I was just trying to find my way. I was just trying to clear my mind and, and, and land opportunities. But unfortunately, I didn't really have any solid direction. I didn't really have any blueprints in order to find my way. So I messed up many times along the way. I kept asking myself the same question, which were, how does this remote job thing work? How do I find the best remote jobs, not average one, not so-so ones? I had no idea how to apply so that they consider me. Some of those companies out there are getting hundreds, if not thousands of applications. So how could I apply so that they'll consider me? Also, what's the best way to network remotely? I'm pretty good with networking if I can shake someone's hand and meet them over coffee or at a bar, but how do you do that when you are far away? And finally, remote interviews. What should I do? What's the best way to interview when you're using Zoom like we're doing right now or Hangout or Skype? I was a little bit freaked out until I came across two pivotal moments in my life that changed pretty much everything. Um, this guy here in the picture, his name is Leo, and um, I applied to join his company named Buffer. Buffer is a company doing social media, and they are entirely remote. The entire company is working remotely. They don't have a specific proper office. Uh, when I joined Buffer in 2014, they had 15, 15, 15 employees. I helped them scale their company from 15 to 90 people, okay? so we really grew the company enormously during the three years I was part of the company. So here's a little picture we took in New York uh, where Leo, the person that hired me, my former boss, is at the back on the top right corner and I'm on the bottom left corner smiling with a big smile on my face because I was lucky enough to join a remote startup. That meant that I could worry from Wherever I wanted, I would only meet my colleagues twice a year, and that was a very happy get-together and event. Um, so for this startup, I was in charge of recruiting for a time. Uh, I was the head of finance and operation for Buffer.com, helping them to scale up to 92 employees. 
And then, because I'd realized how hard it was to land a remote job, I created a startup named Remotive.io. And this is designed to help people land remote jobs. Since I've been sitting on both sides of a table, I've been a remote candidate and a remote recruiter. I wanted to share the experience of how it feels to be sometime hiring, sometime applying, and what best practices happen to be uh, present out there. So that's how I got together 25,000 people as a community because I get to share tips on how to best apply to those remote jobs. And before we get started, you and I need to dispel some myths on remote work because if we don't dispel a few myths, it'd be very hard to get into the mistakes. So here are a few things that I get to hear all the time. My subscribers email me those things all the time, okay? First myth is I can't let a remote job without remote experience which isn't correct. A lot of people manage to land a remote job without having worked remotely before. I am an example, several other people are examples as well. If you worked in uh, distributed teams, in projects that happen in multiple cities, or if you can simply demonstrate that you're a trustworthy candidate, you don't need to have past remote experience in order to be a quality candidate. Number two, no one will hire me if I live or travel outside of the US? Well, it does happen, and it does happen big time. Um, some of the com companies applying are European-based companies or Asian-based companies, and then hire people that don't necessarily live within US time zones. So it is totally possible for someone who live and travel outside of the US, much like myself as a Frenchman doing business with America for the last five years it's very, poss very, very possible for you to find jobs outside of the US if you're traveling remote here, if you are on the road as well. Number three, if I'm not an engineer, I won't find a remote job. Luckily, that's not true either. I've seen so many cool jobs come up at the beginning of 2018 with people working in marketing, in HR, in accounting, in customer support, and so on and so forth. Remote work used to be very much geared around technical people. Today, tons of listings are still for technical people, but non-technical folks can also land jobs. And it's much, more, it's much easier than it used to be. Number four, self-taught candidates cannot land remote jobs. Also, this number four point is an entire myth. Some of the most skilled and talented candidates I've ever worked with were self-taught candidates. If anything, it shows and demonstrates resilience, which is an excellent trait for a remote worker. Number five, there's a perfect time to apply. That's also a myth. You can apply at any time. Uh, there's no recruiting season in terms of remote work. Any time is a great time for you to apply, really. And number six is not a myth. It's more of a mindset that I hear over and over again in the email I've been getting. It is, I don't know where to start at all. And that's partially what I want to address today through this webinar, okay? So now let's dive in the topic, the meaty part of it all. I want to go towards the three key mistakes. And those mistakes, um, I've been noticing them as uh, based on my personal experience as a candidate and recruiter, and also through hundreds and hundreds of conversation and emails that I get to have each week with my subscribers. All right, folks, mistake number one. Being a jack of all trades, this is very, very important. Most people I meet that want to work remotely in startup or outside get to tell me, oh, I'm a jack of all trades or oh, I'm a jill of all trades. And truth of the matter is, for most startup, hiring a generalist is not helpful at all. Most remote teams won't hire a generalist because your skill set, as perceived by them, is way too broad. I want to tell you more about this and, and share a little bit more on how to fix it as well. I don't know if you've seen that movie, the one from the picture showing on the screen right now. It's a screenshot and a meme from the movie Office Space that aired in 1999. It's a great movie about remote work if you've ever seen one. And in this movie, the two characters here on the screen are asking the candidates this very simple question. What would you say you do here? And if you say, I'm a generalist, I can do anything. Well, unfortunately, nothing particularly helpful for the two recruiters, the two consultants sitting 
across the table because those people need quick answers. They need to be able to know how exactly you're going to be bringing value to the organization and how you're going to be helping them starting Monday at 9 a.m., how you're going to be helping making the company better. In other words, remote teams, they hire you for your impact. They're thinking, how can you help them today? How can you help them immediately? And you see, my friends, that's a very big difference with larger organizations that sometimes will hire you for your potential. Your potential is what will happen in six months from now or what will happen a year from now. Whereas remote teams need your immediate assistant. That's why oftentimes they don't appreciate generalists. They really want to know what problem you can solve immediately. I want to show you two examples of how you can get better at this. First, my example, and then a technical person example. All right, check this out. You have a picture on the right-hand side of your screen. It's a funnel picture because we're going to go from broad progressively to something very, very narrow. So let's see. Let's check out how I introduce myself. On my LinkedIn, I could have a very broad statement about what I do for a business. I could say, I do business development. But you know what? What's better is that I introduce myself to a recruiter with my craft. Your craft is what you love doing day in, day out, is what puts little sparkles in your eyes. When you talk about your craft, you light up and people can feel your excitement, okay? So what would be better when I talk to a recruiter is to say, I enjoy selling software as a service products. <laughs> Everyone likes different things. That's, that's what I really enjoy doing. So that's my craft. But what's even better when you address recruiters is to be in a sweet spot, meaning letting them know what you can do for them. And in any instance, you will start your sentence with what they need, and then you will articulate your skills based on what it is they need right now. In my example, I say Buffer, which is a remote team, a remote startup, Buffer needs an inbound software as a service, business to business, salesperson, and that happens to be exactly what I do. In the last bit, the sweet spot, the third bullet, what I need to do is research what the company needs right now, either through talking with people inside the company or finding out myself through reading blogs so that I introduce myself as a person that understands the context. I have empathy for the problem of the person hiring me because I can see what is happening right now. And I appear as a much more informed and trustworthy candidate because I know what sweet spots I will be addressing. And when the recruiter reads the last sentence, they immediately know what they can gain from me. And you're starting to be of assistance to them instead of being someone they need to assist figuring out what they need to do as a generalist, which is much better. Let me show you another example. Let's say I'm an engineer and I want to use the same technique. Most people on LinkedIn will say things such as, I'm a front-end engineer with three years experience. What would be better is talking about your craft, which is what you really enjoy doing day in, day out. You could say, I enjoy using React to improve websites. What would be even better is articulating what they can gain from you, such as your FAQ is broken. Here's how I will fix it and improve it for you. That's an immediate way to show them how you can add value to the organization starting tomorrow morning if you were to get hired. That's very tangible and that is much appreciated from a applicant to recruiter um, dynamic. In other words, my friends, it's all about them. How can you help them from day one? You as a candidate help them company from day one. How do you market yourself to them? Which is very situational. Your approach should be different for each and every company you contact because each of them have different issues. Remote teams hire for impact and not for potential unless they're very, very large. They need to be good today not in six months time. That begs the question, how could you be niching down your um, presentation and your introduction of your skills so that you can tell them how you can help today? 
Also, if you say, but Rodolf, I'm a multi-talented individual, and so I can do a variety of things for them. That's great. But I want to know as a recruiter, what's your number one skill that you want to put forward? In other words, you need to put your best foot forward and you need to be identifying the skill that will help you land the job. And if you're not sure what that skill is, it's oftentimes an indicator that you need to be doing more research on the company you are applying to. If you're not too sure, you need to keep digging, keep building your network, keep learning about the company before logging in your application. Always introduce yourself as a solution, not as a problem. Generalists, very nice people, but as a recruiter, they are a problem for me. Whereas people that can help me from day one, they are a solution and I love them. All right, mistake number two, spray and pray approach. You know, most people I know that are looking for remote jobs, those good people, they focus on volume. They use the good, good old spray and pray approach. And I hear things all the time, such as, oh, I need to subscribe to 20 job boards, or I need to apply to 10 companies per week. And you know what? It gets tiring. It gets tiring because applying to everything will take a lot of energy from you. And oftentimes, you don't customize your application just as much if you apply to 20, 30, 40 companies per week. You will get very tired from that. It is exhausting. The number of jobs to which I have applied and received no response is too damn high. That happens a lot. Because applying for tons of jobs at the same time almost never works. And when it does, I would argue, my friends, that you may get hired for the wrong reasons. What do I mean by that? If you spray and pray your application everywhere, people may hire you because you are the cheapest, or the only person available for the job. But if you're the cheapest or the only one, I would argue that's not a solid basis to build a long-term career-oriented decision. It's just so happened that you showed up. Whereas I want you to be in a team where your value align with them and where you feel like you can grow as a professional. That is what I wish for you. So when you think about that, it's worth spending quite a bit of time in order to find a company that is good for what you want to do. And also, again, you will get tired of applying very quickly. Um, when you want to be applying for a company, it takes a lot of effort to do the research part, I think. And I don't want you to be burned out through doing tons of application because on the side of your application, life goes on. You still uh, do your freelancing or your current job, uh, you run errands and so on and so forth. So I don't want you to get burned, uh, burned down because you are applying to too many things too quickly, okay? So how can we avoid this together? My recommendation to you is to list 10 remote startups you'd like to work for, and no more than 10, no more than 10. That's a good number to focus, but I wouldn't venture to say more than 10. And then ask yourself the following question. And this is very important. I'm not messing around here. This is very, very important. Because if you cannot answer those questions, you're not ready to apply, friend. First is, are you using the product or service? If you're not using the product or service, even the free version, you're not ready to apply. If you want to buy a BMW and you park, you're going to the dealership driving a Mercedes, it doesn't look too good. It's not a line. If I, as a recruiter, ask you, how do you like my software and you don't use my software, I can do nothing for you, friend. Okay? So you need to use a product or service. That is for sure. Second, what do they need or what do they struggle with today? You should be able to answer that question. You should be able to find interviews, talks, podcasts, tweets, Instagram pictures, uh, interviews, uh, corporate communication, and so on and so forth, where the leadership of the company, of the startup, is going to be sharing what they want to do. Maybe they did raise funds recently, so they want to do something with it, such as opening up markets in Europe and Asia. Or maybe they shared their struggle as well. And you need to be able to, be able to understand that. 
that's part of your research and you should be very diligent about your research, which ties into the last point, which is what's your best way in? If you want to land a job, you have multiple ways to go about it. Uh, some people go through the main door, which is perfectly fine, but sometimes going through the main door, which is where everyone gets in, you find yourself um, with an application that lands on a pile with a hundred of other applications. Maybe you know someone that knows someone. Maybe you have a special relationship with an advisor or a founder or a customer of the company even. And I want you to start thinking about the multiple ways they are to apply to a company that is not necessarily sending your CV to jobs at companyname.com because there are so many different ways to do that. And to assist you do just that, my friend, I created a list that is named 600 Startups Hiring Remotely in 2018. If you Google that, you will find the list that I've created for you. Um, I've been running this list for two years. I update it on a weekly basis. So it's very comprehensive. And I've listed all the good stuff just for you. I've, list, I've been listing company names, what they do, CEO, and so on and so forth. And you can see in the red box that I've been highlighting on this screen that this spreadsheet, when I took the screenshot, which was a couple of weeks ago, they, it had 82 total viewers. 82 people were looking at this information at the same time. So what can we learn from this? Well, two things. First, now you have the information to know which startups are hiring in 2018 because I just gave it to you. So if you Google this, you will find my list. And I'm very happy to give that to you all as a gift. The second thing you get to learn is that if 82 people are or were looking at this file at the same time, the competition to get those jobs is immensely high. So what that means is if you want to apply to those companies, you better have a structure, you better have an idea on how to best go about it. Because if you do what we've seen in mistake number two, which is spray and pray, it's not going to work. You've got all these uh, uh, anonymous animals you have to compete against, just, such as the alligator, badger, beaver, camel, and, and so on and so forth. Um, so you have a lot of competition there, and you need a method, okay? Otherwise, it's going to be very, very messy. All right, folks. This is leading us to mistake number three, which is very tricky. And it is so tricky that I picked a picture to illustrate this. Mistake number three is called no networking. And I've pictured a person trying to climb an icy mountain by themselves, which is very tricky. Looking for a job is a job, and your job is to build trust. Now I'll just pause for a minute. I know I'm talking quite fast and I get very excited about things. But if you join Remote Here as a program, if you're passionate about going on travels with a group of uh, talented individuals about exploring different cities, exploring different parts of the world, you will know that networking and community is a very, very central part to everything you do. Because through such a program, you can start building trust. You will see people that are your, uh, your peers day in, day out. Those people also have jobs, also have responsibility. And it's a great year of your life because you get to share so much with them. And it begs the question that with people you have in your program, you can build trust face-to-face -face because you hang out with them for a good portion of your day, of your weeks, of your months, of your year. But when you need to apply to a job, very often times you haven't met the recruiter, you haven't met the CEO, you don't have a direct relationship or contact with those good people. So mistake number three is trying to land a job without building trust. Because on the internet, there's an infinite number of people that can speak English and can land a job, especially now that can, people can apply from anywhere. So your main job as an applicant, my friend, is to build trust. Because without trust, it's going to be very hard for me as a recruiter 
to consider you as a candidate. And I want to give you a very actionable example of this. I want to show you a portfolio that I find very cool because it is simple. You don't need a fancy software to build it, but I find it very relevant as well. Let's check it out together. This is a portfolio from my friend Adrian, Adrian Jolie. His name is on the top left-hand corner. All right, so what can we see here? Couple of things. First, just beneath his name, it says JavaScript developer. Underneath it says startup maker, and one line below it says drummer. Right off the bat, I'm getting a feel for what Adrian is doing, which is I get a feel for his craft, I get a feel from what he's enjoying, and I get a feel for his personality as well, for some extent. I don't know the guy just yet, but he says drummer. So you're trying to introduce yourself as a full person, not only a LinkedIn PDF export. You need to be able to showcase yourself in full. You all that are traveling the world with remote here and are excited to do that, you need to be able to illustrate the discovery you're doing to people that will be hiring you as well. You can see that um, on the last line, there's a link towards this GitHub, which is this coding project, his LinkedIn, professional resume, Medium, because he's blogging articles, and Twitter as well. We could potentially see his Instagram if we wanted to, and so on and so forth. What I really like here is that in about three minutes, two to three minutes, I can just click around and I can see his recent projects, I can see his contact. If I'm keen, I can even see his music and see what he's been up to. So it feels pretty exciting to be able to get an insight on what Adrian's life is like because I not only get what he's been doing professionally, I also get to see what he's been doing uh, for fun and for you, it could be travel, photography, blogging, and so on and so forth. So building a portfolio and showcasing your personality is the starting point, if not cornerstone, to be a quality candidate when applying for a remote job. If I cannot look you up, if I cannot find a place where I can see what it is you've been doing, either before remote here or during remote here, it's really hard to build confidence. So mistake number three is networking. And networking starts with building a portfolio and then opening up to the world and to the community. I've been lucky to build the Remotive community for the last three years now. And here's a little map of people that are connecting all over the world and connecting with us in our Slack community. And as I just told you in mistake number three, one of the tougher thing is not having virtual trust. So we've been trying to fight it within Remotive. And we've been trying to fight it so much that we created a community. And in our Slack community, there are individuals that work for all those companies and many more as well. So people that work for Automatic, Envision, Trello, and so on and so forth. And the goal of having a community is this, what you're seeing from the screen from Mary. Mary is saying, we are an entirely remote team of 28 people across 15 states and 10 countries. We're actively hiring for new positions, such as product marker. Check out the description and reach out to me directly. You see, for me, when I think about mistake number three, I think that it takes a village to land a remote job. This is why I created Remotive and Remotive Community, because I want to be able to connect people that are candidates with folks like Mary that can give you a direct connection on whether you're good candidates or not. Effectively, I want to build a water cooler that is a connection between applicants and recruiters, okay? And this is pretty much what happens to be happening in the end, such as you apply for a company such as Automatic and say you don't get a response. Well, luckily, there's someone in the chat that happens to work at the company and they can try to investigate what is happening on the inside. So whether it's the recruiter or an employee of the company, you get to find people that can assist you. I know that you can do it to some extent within the remote here community. Certainly, the remote community has been geared around that actual purpose, trying to bridge 
build a bridge between companies and applicants, okay? And of course, um, <laughs> build this little motto, which is you'll never work alone, where I myself continue feeding jobs uh, and at least half of the jobs I'm feeding our jobs channel are non-technical. So it's not all about programming, design, and data science. It's also the rest, which is HR, ops, marketing, support, and so on and so forth, okay? So here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna recap on the three mistakes, and then I wanna tell you about a program we have, which is Remotive Bootcamp. And finally, we'll open up for question and we'll have time to address a question in the chat or directly um, in, the, um, in the chat room from Zoom as well. So mistake number one, what we've seen together is that you should not be a generalist. At least you should not apply as a generalist. Study the company to understand how you can put your best foot forward, okay? Mistake number two, no spraying and praying you should be focusing on maximum 10 companies. To do that, I've built a list of over 600 startups hiring remotely. If you haven't found it on Google just now, Wes will send it to you as a recap. Uh, there will be my little gift to you to help you with your job search. Number three, networking is key. You need to be tapping into the community and you need to be able to build an identity for yourself. First, through a portfolio, and second, through being present and active in communities, assisting you to land jobs. That will make a world of a difference, okay? And at this stage, you may be saying, well, my friends don't really do this. And the reality is that most people only focus on skills and years of experience. But you are more than what you just say on LinkedIn. All those remote teams you may be applying to, they want to have skills working for them, but they also want to have people and personality. In other words, don't tell me what you can do. Show me what you can do. I want you to show me what you can do. That's why I invite you to our portfolios and to network some more, for instance. And what I wish for you is no running and gunning, not having a system to follow may have you waste a lot of time and a lot of money. Same as not having a community. It makes this even tougher. And I don't want this to happen to you because it was my situation in 2013, early 14, and it took me a long time to land a job, which I don't wish for you to happen. The cool thing is you can start applying and finding jobs right now. Nothing of this is theory. It's just what I have did along with tons of other people. And that's why I want to introduce a program of bid building, which is my system to do just that, okay? And of course, you have a choice. You always have a choice. You can either take some of what I've shared today, do things slowly using trials and error, which is totally an option. Or you can try and do it quickly by joining my four module program, which is Remotive Bootcamp. Um, I've created a step-by-step -step system for finding, applying, and interviewing for remote startup jobs. Uh, that is meant to be the shortcut, going from point A to point B. It's an online course that is 100% digital, accessible 24 seven, and nothing is left out. Um, I took my best learnings and I tapped into the community to make it the best program I know how. So what is covered by this program, you may ask? Well, I have four simple modules. And remember, I will send you those slides afterwards. So if you want to check this out in more details, that's perfectly cool. I will go through them quite quickly because I want to make sure to have time for question and answers to answer any question you may have about finding jobs, okay? So number one is, where are the best jobs? I give you my personal tips on ways that are not very well known to land quality jobs. Where can you look that other people are not looking right now? And what are the bonus ways to find jobs? Module number two is getting ready to apply. Specifically, I want to help you create your portfolio and I want to make you understand how to reverse engineer your job search. So, that means how can you discover your 
unfair advantage as a remote worker and become a great, great applicant. Then we move on to applying remotely, which is about crafting unit application that makes you stand out. Um, I'll tell you everything I know about networking. And um, I work at Google studying networking specifically for a few years and also tell you how to apply. I made a guide, which is step by step together with a screen sharing exercise of me pretending to look for a job. And finally, the last module is acing interviews. I've been doing so many interviews as a recruiter. I've seen quality candidates show up and unfortunately they were not very good during interviews. So it ended up being a big no for me. Uh, I will share everything I know about preparing, performing and following up interviews because that will make a world of a difference as well. Um, and as an illustration of our bootcamp, we have Courtney who used to be a lead product designer at Kickstarter in New York. Um, she went to our bootcamp and today she is a product designer working for Automatic, uh, making a cool six figure salary. So that's one of her students, Courtney, that took the remote bootcamp. Um, another of her students uh, was from Brazil, took the training and said that it made a difference between getting the job and not getting the job. Uh, is used my tools, is used the techniques, and it worked out. So very happy for Luis as well. Um, I've got quite a bit of shameless love from the community, but I'm gonna go through it quite fast. You can check it out in the uh, slides after this presentation because the community is very enthusiastic. So how about this training? Well, I'm a business school teacher as well, and when I teach to business school, uh, for a similar set of content, it often sells for $5,000 in terms of a workshop. Uh, it's not a price I'm willing to charge because I feel like this should be more accessible and this is an online course as well. So typically, it's not charging to the thousand. People usually pay Remote Diff Bootcamp for $249. But since Wes and Remote here are really core cool organization, we have a special discount for you all and you get $50 off and the training is available for $199, okay? And it's a Netflix style kind of training so you get access to the entire thing immediately, to the entire course. Uh, I'm also throwing three cool bonuses for you all uh, to make it even more interesting. Um, you will get a lifetime access to my Slack community where you can meet 800 people that work remotely, including people from the cool companies I've been highlighting before, okay? So we're a virtual water cooler and we help people network and find jobs. That's what we do. You also get my YouTube MBA guide, which is about personal development, including 80 videos. And finally, which is a pretty cool one, you get four exclusive videos from people that are recruiters or leaders. So you get to hear from the people that will be interviewing US candidates. As, so you get a sense of how it feels to work for those companies, hearing from HR and hearing from leadership directly. Those interviews have never been published elsewhere. They are exclusive to this training. And of course, as you can probably tell by now that they, <laughs> <laughs> by the speed of my speech, um, I'm very passionate about this. So I have a 30-day, 100% money-back guarantee. Um, here's Adrian from my team that, uh, that happens to handle everything. So if you don't like it for any reason, you get your money back because life's too short and I want to bring value to people and I really like what I do. All right, so to recap, it all starts with taking action today. We're gonna to be doing Q&A in just a minute. Uh, before that, I want to give you a last exclusive bonus. If, if, if you decide to purchase the program during this session, during our live webinar, I'm happy to answer any three of your questions by email. So I don't usually do consulting, but if you purchase this program during the live broadcast, I'll answer any three of the questions you have. Very happy to do that. Um, so it's all available on learn.remotive.io. That's the URL, learn.remotive.io. 
All you have to do is enter the remote year 2018 code. It's remote year 2018 code. And then it will ask you to pay. And that will be the start of the training. Learn.remote.io, remote year 2018. You get immediate access to all the cool things. And the good news is that if you want to, you can start doing it right now. It doesn't take a lot of time. It doesn't take um, forever. It's not a next year sort of thing. It's something you can start doing today. Okay. Again, it's your decision. I'm about to go into Q&A now. Either you can take some of what I've taught you today and run with it, or you can use my system, which is the shortcut. All right. So this is my very last slide. I'm going to stop talking now and I'm going to start taking questions. Every information is in this slide. You can find the bootcamp program on learn.remotive.io and the coupon is remote year 2018. So that's what I wanted to share. Those are the three mistakes. This is my program. I'm so excited to be back in a room interacting with you all and I'm going to start taking questions now. Great. After. Well, awesome. There you go. You got some questions coming in, but, but in general, thanks so much. I mean, this is super helpful. I think, um, this, you know, this is the type of stuff that we talk about a lot at, at remote year and, and, you know, amongst our customer success team. So it's really good to know that, um, that, you know, there's a system out there in place that can, that can work and just general things to even think about avoiding, right? Like falling into the, to the trap of being a generalist. Um, you know, thinking about like just applying to a bunch of places and not really knowing what they do and then, and then kind of being caught off guard. Um, so, uh, yeah, we can definitely get some questions in. Do you, do you have access to the chat, Rodolph, or do you want me to, to funnel them? Sure. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now and I will be back with you all momentarily. Um, there you go. One of the questions cool. is, does the course, uh, from Angela, does the course highlight portfolios? There are two portfolio examples in the course, so it doesn't cover everything since some people are data scientists and others are copywriters, so it's a bit hard to go very wide there. But I do have specific examples in mind, and if you email me, I'm also happy, always happy to share uh, some of the coolest portfolio I've seen in a long time. So I try to highlight one per specific profile, like one, per engin one for engineer, one for designer, one for product manager, and so on and so forth. Do you think data analytics? Yes. So June is asking about data analytics candidates. Absolutely. I think it's a, uh, it's a well worth course for people that are professionally qualified and that want to go to the extra step, which is to be professionally qualified to work at remote startup. So that's the only layer of understanding that you need to uh, bridge as a small gap to be very, very relevant as a candidate. Also, feel free to, to I mean, feel free to write your questions. But if you want to just get off mute, you can also totally um, just jump in into video. Hi. Thanks hey. for saying I can get off mute. Um, this my question is a little, little long. So I am in event planning, and I have my own business. And um, but most of the people that I've been networking with in New York City, where I come from, they tell me that oh, it's wonderful, Gina. We all love working with you, but we're going to wait until you get back in June. And I frankly don't want to come back. Um, I changed my, <laughs> my business so that I could do it remotely and do it for restaurants. And I designed a model around that. My, my biggest question is I'm trying to be able to sell what I do to two restaurants and two other people, but I'm having a really hard time with that. And so that's A, and I need to get money now for that. And then B, I, I was a little misunderstanding as to what this would be this morning because I actually have a startup and I have a big meeting coming up with my startup to sell my software to um, a, school, uh, a school district. So I thought that's what we would be doing. So I don't know exactly what my, my question is other than I appreciate what you're doing. I understand what you're saying about uh, don't pray and spray because I've been applying to a lot of places and that's been kind of what's been happening. Um, so I really want to sort of get into the nugget of being more specific and also being specific in a field that is traditionally not been seen as being something that one can do remotely. Yeah, thank you for the question, Dina. I appreciate it. Um, 
a couple of thoughts, I guess I'm mostly focused on startups, but when it comes to building your own business, one thing that I've seen work well is to try and double down in those that do appreciate and do understand the fact that you can be a productive professional while being remote. So I'd really try and find the current customer you have that are very happy with your services, maybe trying to either up upsell, which is doing more business with them right now, or trying to find more of the same, same that already understand that you could be a worthy professional without being present. And I know that event planning sometimes ties you to a location in particular. So I feel like the understanding of your clients, either through having someone that is happy with your services being operated remotely, referring you to someone else, which is happy to do that, as in referral from clients to clients that are happy not to have you around, but be the great professional that you are, is, is one of the organic way to expand it, what it is you do, I feel. Any other questions? Any other thoughts, comments? I have a question or a thought or a comment. Um, hi, Susan. Um, right now, I'm currently seeking business opportunities in the country where I am. Um, I'm in Bolivia, I'm in Cochabamba. And while I'm trying to figure out these business opportunities and trying to start an own business, I do need some income. So I'm trying to figure out how can I balance my time and energy with networking on the ground, but at the same time trying to find remote work. Like I want to be honest to these companies and tell them that, you know, I'm seeking my own company to do business opportunities you know, from Bolivia and the U S but I do need income. So sure. whether that is kind of ask them for maybe part-time work or how do I, how do I communicate that? Or how do I, you know, in terms of building trust, how do I be honest with them and then have them still hire me? So that's for the sure. kind of balance that I'm just struggling with. Yeah, I hear you. It's, it's interesting because job search never happens in vacuum in, in the sense that you always have something going and then you look for a job on top of which, whatever commitment you have. So that's absolutely true. And I feel that in that particular instance, freelance can be quite interesting in order to bridge the gap, trying to have a short-term or part-time assignment uh, could be helpful to both do what you're doing, which is expanding your business and look for opportunities as well. So have you been freelancing before? Have you, have you? No. So, you know, I'm not, I don't have a specific trade in terms of like technology and the majority of the jobs that I've been looking at are like software engineers or like coding or designers. And that's just not my background. My background is just marketing and like project management and customer um, sales support. And I was working for a company for 10 years. And while being a remote year of the six months, I decided to quit just cause I couldn't, I, I mean, for other reasons, I was just, I just didn't want to do that job anymore. Sure. Um, and I was ready to move on. So I took the big leap and I've decided to quit. And I mean, I've been very lucky to be living on my savings, but you know, now those savings are kind of starting to run out and I need some type of work and I'm just, you know, I don't really know how to start finding remote jobs, yeah. but also in my field or in a field that I would be interested in, but at the same time seek, you know, start my own business and seek business opportunities on what I want to kind of establish, you know, here. Yeah, I hear you. So what I've seen work with some of the uh, community members and other people is that you try and some of them trying to separate the time saying two or three days per week, I will be freelancing mm -hmm. either finding contracts to the community, such as remote year, remotive or Upwork or flex jobs. So existing platform that actually that been working for a long time. And then you spend two days per week, which you, or two evening applying for jobs and be a little bit more long-term. So you have two, just two things going. You have an income that ticks in through consulting and through short term together with the longer term plan, which is, uh, you know, apply to remote jobs. Right. Okay. All right. Thanks. So it, it's hard to balance the, the time you put in, but oftentimes consulting needs a little bit more time to take off. And once you have this mental and financial insurance and stability, oftentimes you have more brain space to look for jobs as well. So 
it's, right. it's a lot about priorities. Right. Okay. Thanks. Awesome. Well, I know we're a couple minutes over. Um, I don't know if anyone else has any questions. Um, you can also always, uh, how long will, how long for, how long today will the offer be available? Um, I'm happy to run it until the end of the day, like end of the, my day, which is another eight hours. Great. Um, cool. So yeah, if anyone has any questions, um, I, again, I recorded this, uh, this webinar, so I will definitely share it. If you think this would be helpful for friends or anything, definitely please um, let me know and I'd be happy to, to share that as well, especially people that are in the nation. Um, thanks so much, Rodolf. Uh, can we do a round of applause? Is that, a, is that available? Yeah. Everyone's on mute, but trust me, they're clapping. Um, we, we really appreciate it. Um, I think this is really, really valuable info and insight. Um, definitely, you know, just a, a couple small tweaks that folks can even make, even if you're not looking for a job, right? Like just kind of thinking about your story, thinking about, you know, how do I become more specialized? Um, how do I continue to, to think about, um, you know, the tools that I like to use and maybe, maybe there's a, you know, down the road, there's an opportunity to work for one of those companies that you authentically just really enjoy using their software, their tool. So, um, things just to think about moving forward. And yeah, uh, I am always available. You can always email me at uh, west.peltzman at remoteyear.com, but it's also probably easier if it's just success at remoteyear.com. Um, Rodolph's information is here as well. And I have everybody's email that was in this, um, in this webinar, so I can definitely send follow-ups where appropriate. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for joining. Um, I hope this was valuable for all of you and let me know if you want me to share it with anyone else. Any other last words, Ronald? Super excited for your adventure. I think it's a very special time to be traveling and working at the same time. So I know finding jobs or, or changing position can be daunting, but uh, I really hope that you see how cool of a position it is to be traveling and exploring the world at the same time. And I, I wish you all, all the best. Stay in touch and email me if you have questions. Awesome. All right. Thanks, everybody. Um, I'll stick around for another minute or two, but if you have any last questions or you want to ask anything privately, but um, other than that, feel free to, to jump and get off to your days, or your evenings, or whatever it is. Hopefully, you're, most of you are enjoying warm weather. Um, and uh, yeah, if this was you know supremely helpful, please just like let me know because we can continue to do stuff like this. Um, or you know, if there's specific topics you're really interested in, um, you know, I want to make sure that everyone's kind of getting access to the information that that they're excited about. So cool. Thanks, everyone. I would sing, but I'm not good at that, so I'm not going to do that. Like, sing everybody off, but... <laughs>